And on to the next chapter. Eight Armed and Dangerous. Green, I was wondering when you'd show up. I got the latest scoop on the Victor's spoils that our many-faced friend has set his sights on. He visits the Coliseum of late. There's a tourney in the works, and it's looking to be a big one. The Mithril Cup, sponsored by none other than Amalgina and Amagina and Sons Mineral Concern. They say that Master Fire Guys is, will be furnishing the fri prizes himself from his personal collection. Small wonder has captured the attention of Mr. Sticky Fingers. You are familiar with the concern, yes? It's only the largest mining interest in the Sultanate, after all. The chairwoman, Master Fear Guy, sits on, sits on the syndicate, and he possesses such wealth that rumor has it he could buy half the realm if he chose to. He's also renowned for being something of a martial arts enthusiast. With this position affording him little luxury to test his own skills, he settles for living vicariously through exploits of others, hence his sponsorship of tournaments like the Mithril Cup. He also had his hand in the Mass Carnival, too. My colleague Ganelon is an old da, covering the tourney as we speak. If we were to track him down, I bet he'd be able to give us something to get our investigation started. That is definitely a chocobo. Yes, I'm busy man. If you're looking for small talk, I suggest you look elsewhere. No need to be rude, Ganelon. He's a friend of mine. Now, what say you share your lady's findings with us? I promise I'll make it worth your while. Uh, Ellie, if if <clears throat> if it isn't the Mithril Eye Star Reporter, come to have a laugh at Ganelon's expense for returning to your pen, your latest front page feature, eh? <sighs> oh, very well. Just promise you'll put in a good word for me at the higher ups, okay? And let me tell you this. There's strange things afoot at the Coliseum. Booger all, it's a travesty, I tell you! That's a very strange uh, happenings indeed. Watch you and Hamo! What's the the matter? And pray tell, where is. And where, pray tell, is Hutchin? The four of you will compete for the cup together, yes? I fear that an unfortunate mishap has left Hutchin in no condition to fight. We are just on our way to convey the dire news to Dower Meadow. Mishap, my ass! This was sabotage! Some bloody coward out there will stop at nothing to eliminate his competition. I swear on my subligar. Lower your voice, Hutch. My head stings it up without your bloody shouting. Hutchin, should you not be resting your wounds? Oh, but forgive your incompetent, unworthy comrade. If I had been quicker with my mantra, we would still be four men strong. Not berate yourself so, Hamo. In victory and defeat, the Mantravilles fight as one. You bear no more responsibility for my wounds than I. Any road, I dare say I'll not be back into fighting Fettel by arsing about in bed. I'm ready to chant some mantras. How about the lot of you? Hutchin, for you I'm always ready. Now that's what I like to hear. A thousand mantras and I want each one to ring out over the Sagoli. The Mantravilles? Aye, as Hutchin tells it, they took their name from a training partner they met at the Fist of Rolga, a man they most admire for his devotion and chiseled physique. Hmm. Ah, yeah, that, that definitely sounds familiar. So maybe his claim about training with the Fist of Rolga didn't, uh, wasn't actually untrue. 
Consider me not the least bit interested. The talk of attacks on the competitors, however, of this I would hear more. I kind of want to hear about Hildebrand training with the fists of Ralker, actually. Ray was Godbert. Ah, yes. I mentioned that strange things were afoot, yes? With mere days left before the Mithril Cup, a staggering number of would-be combatants have withdrawn, citing a most host of curious ailments and injuries. With a list of entrants shaking by the day, the organizers have been forced to abandon the elimination format in favor of a mass melee between what few battlers remain. Phantom Thief's challenge. Gladiators dropping like flies. No. This is no mere coincidence. I would speak to the individual in charge of the concert. Or er, event. Where would I find him? Well, the concerned co sponsor's attorney, the day to the organizational duties are being handled by a fellow by the name of Dower Meadow. He should be in his office with the Coliseum's halls. I'll send a word to the gate man, Yuyobaba. Yuyobaya. He owes me he owes me throw out a favor or two. Splendid. Come, Green. We got a case to crack. Mithra I, you say? And by all means, you're free to enter. I'm Ellie, reporter for the Mithra I. Never blinking, all seeing, you know the deal, yes? And you must be Dower Meadow. I was hoping I could ask you a few questions about the upcoming tourney. I to argue with free publicity. I'm from a charming little thing like yourself. Ask away, Mikaro. That said, between the challenge from so what the so called Phantom Thief and now these bizarre attacks targeting the fighters, our Tony's already talk of the town. Not that you'll see me complaining, provided someone's still left to fight, that is. You're free to investigate as you wish, but you'll be smart to exercise some caution. Need to say, needless to say, recent events have everyone here a bit on edge. Why, oh, just moments ago, one fighter almost took off another head for insulting the color of his sublic. Looks like we got ourselves another. Hmm? Those two aren't in the entry books. Oh, and Briardin KOs the inspector with one hit. And our challenger unleashes a vicious right hook as the gentleman inspector was channeling his strength for his next attack. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner! Inspector Briarden, as efficient as ever, I see. A true gentleman! <laughs> Issues violence, <laughs> Inspector! You were thinking. It annoyed me. Dow Meadow, I presume. Tell me everything you can about the prizes for this tourney, and try to be brief. Was wondering when you might ask. Master Fire Guys have spared no expense in making the Mithril Cup the most lucrative tourney the Colseans ever seen. The Richter will receive a true treasure from his collection. The Warden's Grace, a ring fitted with the largest sun sphere you'll find outside a Karn. A second and third base prizes are nothing to sneeze at either. But I don't care how many faces he's got, we got nothing to fear from this thief. The concern has hired an elite regiment of stone torches to watch over the vault day and night. Uh, hiring an elite regiment uh, with first field I can sneak in. Where have I heard this before? Yes, just as the brass blades just as brass blades were so successful in stopping the thief last time. If you want your treasures safe, go fetch them and bring them to me, and be quick about it. I haven't got all day. I can't do that, Inspector. After all, what proof do I have that you ain't missed many faces in another one of his elaborate get-ups? No, if you want to get your hands on the spoils, you have to claim them as any other would. In battle. 
As a matter of fact, what with the ranks thin as they are, we're actively recruiting new competitors. The more the merrier, and more lucrative at that. <laughs> Now, where did our receptionist get off to? Over here, you slimy bugger. We got some fresh blood for the melee. Oh, give me a moment, will ya? I've only got eight arms or... or were they legs? It's Ultras! Slobbering Cephalopod. You called? I was about to give the lovely Miss Avila the grand tour. Inspector Hildebrand, look! He's... purple! Astute as ever, Nashu! This color, this overabundance of appendages! I smell a case! I think that's just... I think that's just a... smell of octopi. Ah! That's just my receptionist, Ultros. Don't be startled now. He's an ugly little bugger, but he's friendly enough. Well, it has it that he was one of the many bizarre creatures born of a re recent experiment with in ancient incantations at the Thaumaturgist Guild. They were going to seal him away in a hole in the desert with the others. When he opened his slobbering mouth and started pleading for his life, I just want to live in peace. I'll do anything, anything. So the management hired him to perform odd jobs about the Coliseum. And I'm glad that they ever and I'm ever glad that they did. I tell ya. This job ain't glamorous, but it sure has its perks. And what a delicious morsel. I want to get my tentacles around her. Ew. Uh, ew. Hmm. I know not who you are or where you hail, hail from, and I do not care. If you dare try to challenge, dare to challenge me, my Tempest Blade will show you no mercy. And you can forget about your case, Inspector. There's only one who will claim the victor's spoils, and that is me. Oh, I just love it when she talks rough. Now, who's the chump who wants to get a pummeling by my lovely little Avi? Me? Though a gentleman takes far more pride in rescuing fair damsels than fighting them, I fear we have little recourse. I, Hildebrand, agent of inquiry, inspector extraordinaire, shall do what must be done to- The green slime will be entering the tournament on my behalf. Green slime? You do look like a slime. Well, bucket me with a spear to think I see the day when a warning in our light stood in my coliseum. Hear that clink clink clinking? That's the sound the guild poured into our coffers when the public finds out a true Eosian hero will be stepping into the ring to fight them for the Mithra Cup. Oh, and I reckon your friend can tag along too. John went to sign, Nolte. With green, I suppose we have as good a chance as any. Now I just need to make sure he doesn't come down with some curious injury. The gladiatrix, Avila was it, seemed quite certain of her chances at victory. Suspiciously certain, I would say. Aha! I am already ten steps of you, Inspector, and that old Charles fellow must seem most knowledgeable about Miss Avila. Come, Nashu, the investigation is afoot. As much as that sounds like an amazingly productive line of investigations, might I suggest that our first priority is to keep Green safe here. Let us return to Ganelons and see what he can tell us of these mysterious attacks on the combatants. Very well, I shall leave that task to you. I have a lead of my own to investigate. Should you uncover any new information, I trust you will share it with me at the first opportunity. I will only promise to try.
You again? I already told you that. What? Edge of the turn, you say? Are you out of your bleeding mind? Look, I got a suspicion or two which I'm happy to share with you, but in the end, you have to protect yourself, you hear? So I've been asking around. It seems that more than a few of the fighters who pulled out of the tourney were scheduled to fight a warrior as by the name of Avila. Nah, I can't make any promises, but my instinct tells me this girl is bad news. Don't take it from me when you can hear it from someone who crossed blades with her just days ago. A fellow by the name of Raging Rat, the misfortune of being mashed up with Avila in the preliminary round, nerved himself a right bruising from it all. Last I heard, he was resting up back at the Pudgelist Guild. Why don't you pay him a visit? Hello, Raging Rat. Got to have a good old laugh at Raging Rat's expense, have you? Well, you're not the first. I say, is there not a man in this entire realm with an ordinance of sympathy? Well, greetings, good sir. How fortunate you are today that your guest is Hildebrand Manderville, gentleman and inspector. Now, if you would, please enlighten me to how exactly it was that you were beaten to a bloody pulp by Miss Avila. God, don't miss words, don't you? Gentlemen, my Aras, have you not with us with a delicacy? Never your mind. Look, the records may say I lost, but I'll admit nothing of sort. I'll shout at the top of my lungs if no one else will. That girl doesn't fight fair. Tempest Blades, I got a foul sorcery if you ask me. Mark my words, that girl is up to no good. If she wasn't so damned easy on the eye, she'd be rotten in jail as we speak. Girls Alamigano, haven't you heard? You know I was with those refugees. Why fight with honor when you got nothing to lose? Okay, incredibly rude, but... Yes, why not disparage an entire people in a pathetic attempt to salvage your sorry pride? It was a real piece of work, Green. Let's be on our way. I meant no, I didn't mean no offense, miss. Just like telling it, what, tell it like it is, as it were. Perhaps it truly is a man or sorcery, as the fellow says. Or perhaps she works with an accomplice? You didn't strike me as the magic-wielding type. If I were a betting woman, I'd put my gill on the ladder. Ah, Miss Ellie, the throw the chase has struck a chord with you as well. Yes, I can see it in the wrinkles beneath your eyes. We might very well make an inspectress of you yet. I'll give you a good wrinkle, you insensitive boar. Um, <clears throat> If what the man says is true, it's likely that our fellow Alamegans might sympathize with their plight. An accomplice would hardly be out of the question. Yes, I can see it now. Two unfortunate souls, shunned by those around them, united by destiny and a common desire for justice. Are you talking about yourselves, or Avila and the accomplice, or... Ample appendages whirling wildly, sending gusts of wind flying every which way. Avila and Ulti, a match made in the heavens. Were it any more obvious, I could have solved this case without leaving my home. Incredible! Your powers of deduction never fails to amaze, Inspector. What is it with you two in that infernal octopus? Mr. Ultra should be sold to call seal. Let us hurry before he slithers back off to witness whensoever he came. I guess it's a good about as elite as any. Friend, and look over yonder. Behold those exquisite lakes, those stylish tentacles, the unearthly undulations of its squirmy, squishy body. Yes, our friend Ulti is most fascinating creature indeed. 
behold how he carefully eyes the gladiatrix before him. What manner of mischief is he plotting? He speaks! Yes, this is most suspicious indeed. Oh, what is this? The girl has fled in the panic. Our friend Ulti appears to be discouraged. Look at the way his shoulders sag. Or how they would sag if he had shoulders. Our quarry is on the move. Quickly, Nashu, we must pursue. Oh, he's this guy again. Mr. Ulti seems to have found himself another gladiatrix. What might he be plotting this time? Look at those succulent legs. I reckon they just taste wonderful in a good marinara sauce. Mmm, marinara sauce. Ah, he speaks! And another girl rushes off. Whatever did he say to her? He looks so sad. Shall we douse him in lemon butter and put him out of his misery, Inspector? Whatever is he doing with these girls anyway? Call me crazy, but I think he likes them? Poor misunderstood Ulti. Here we suspected him of criminal activity when in truth he was just a gentle soul luckless in love. Oh, Ulti, can you find it in your squishy, slimy heart to forgive us? Yes, yes. Now perhaps we should return to our investigation. If Avila is as suspicious as they say, perhaps we should follow her around for a bit. Dower Meadow back at the Coliseum should be able to enlighten us as to her whereabouts. An excellent idea, Miss Ellie, but I have a better one. Let us return to the Coliseum and speak with Dyer Meadow. From him, we shall ascertain Miss Avila's whereabouts, upon which we shall follow her about to see if she is indeed as suspicious as they say. Come, Nashu, the investigation calls. That is, that is literally the same thing that one says. Uh, okay. Uh, Ellie doesn't even just bat, a, bat an eye at that anymore. Don't think Uncle Ulti didn't see you following me. That's the big idea, eh? I'm nothing more than a stupid octopus. <laughs> or am I? Come on now. I just wonder what any octopus wants. Cute girl, untold riches, and the admiration of millions. Can't Uncle Holty dream? Well, kids, he ain't can run. And again, I am an octopus. Yes? What is it this time? I'm a busy man. Looking for Avila, you say? Just something about sharing a flagon with our countrymen over that coffer and coffin. Okay, you might still find it there. I'll warn you though, if you're smart, you'll keep your distance from that one. That poor bugger Ganalon tried to interview her for an article, thought the girl was going to rip his head clean off. How can I put this? She doesn't seem to take kindly to being asked questions of personal nature if you'll catch me drift. That said, if you're looking for a good spot and match to warm you up for the tourney, that might just be the ticket. 
I can assure you there'll be no need for gratuitous fisticuffs, my good sir. With my remarkable powers of espionage, we shall we will ascertain all the information we need without the fiery lass even being alerted to our presence. Let us be off. Where is this? Oh, it's in the central Thailand. Behold, the lovely Miss Avila, just as protected. Let us keep watch from here, so as to not set off the girl's fame temper. How many times must I tell you? There is no cause for concern. The spoil shall be mine. It may as well be written stone. Do you realize what this means? We have suffered and suffered long, but my victory shall mark a new era. Just as Rob and Aldin won a new life for himself in the Coliseum, I shall win a new life for our people. The prize that I shall claim will bolster the wealth of a people a thousand, no, ten thousand fold. In a land where wealth is power, we will be kicked to the gutter by the old dons no longer. And with that, I must be off to the Nanawa Mice to meet my sister. Miss Avila's self-assurance is ever a sight to behold. I deduce that my own chances of failing in her on the field of battle are Infinitesimal. Infinitesimal. I could have told you that before you signed up. Come now, you got a suspect to pursue. <laughs> Trying to steal a villa from Uncle Ulti's tentacles, are you? I'm afraid that isn't going to happen. Yes, Uncle Ulti's homemade explosive will see that this is the end of the road for you. Does that make me a bad octopus? Maybe. Ah, the distinctive smell of fire sand. Another one of your handcrafted explosives, I take it, Nashu. Heavens no, Inspector. This is far too elaborate to be one of mine. Do you think whoever crafted this will be willing to give me a lesson? They're on to me. Preposterous. Could it be that muscle head isn't as stupid as he looks? Maybe. I see. In any event, I shudder to think what might happen if an unsuspecting passerby chanced upon such a hazardous object. Allow me. Heave ho! You gotta be kidding me! Wily Ultras. That maiden in mining gall must be the sister of whom Miss Avila spoke. Let us listen a bit closer. I thought we agreed. No hard labor until your leg is healed. I swear, sometimes I think you were born solely to give your sister, poor sister, headaches. It says the girl who once fought off ten Imperials with one good arm. Perhaps Sunday you understand your little sister can take care of herself just as well as you. Speaking of which, what news of the attorney? Worry not, Hegelina. I've done. Ta I've taken all the necessary precautions. The warden's grace is as good as ours. Even the most modest estimate, even the most modest estimates value it. It's worth at some thirty million gil. Do you realize what this means? Necklaces from Est 
necklaces from Ash Times, sun silk dresses, all the luxuries you've ever wanted will be yours. The poor little girls in shabby clothes, object of pity and scorn for all the old aunt's upper crust, those things are over. After I claim victory, we will take our place at the top of the society. I... I don't know, Avi. Wealth is all well and good, and but... When I see you stand tall in the Coliseum, hundreds and thousands are cheering your name, I... I am proud. No matter how humble our birth, if we stand strong, stand together, this alone is all the wealth I ask for. That is your problem, Hegelina. You've been too quick to settle for less than you're worth, but worry not, for your sister is watching over you. I will do this for us. Now I must return. God forbid one of those prying reporters overhear us. Hello, prying reporter. That's my Avi, unfazed by a duel to the death, yet terrified to be caught in a moment of tenderness. May a god smile on you, sister, and be safe. A more moving display of sisterly love I have not seen, and I fear it has afforded us little in the way of prospective clues. It would seem Avila's obsession with victory runs deeper than we imagined. That said, I can't help but feel a bond with the girl. My sister and I were alone in the world too, you see. Inspector, did you just hear what I heard? No. Look kids, Uncle Diaz had it up to here with you. You think you could just fall in this pit and die like a good little boy? <laughs> I'm talking to you, Mr. Warrior of Light. Hear that sound? Just one step closer. Closer. Not you, you idiot! Ahem. No need for concern, friends. I am simply taking the liberty of investigating this hole in the ground, and I am pleased to hear that there seems to be nothing out of the ordinary. Our hero. Now, shall we return to Ulda? The Mithril Cup will be starting before long, and the last thing we want, after all this, is to lose our bout by forfeit. Could it be that that muscle head dive straight into my trap to save his companions? The others seem completely unsurprised at the turn of events. Doubtless he has performed such selfless acts before. A true gentleman, if I ever saw one. But if you think that means I'm going to show mercy on you, you got another think coming. Time to break out the big guns, kids. Wait a minute. I dug two pits, didn't I? Come to think of it, the second one was right around... Give me a break! How does the second pit fall deeper than the first one? Yes, there's something in the matter. We're in the middle. We're on something of a tight schedule here, Inspector. Stand back, Miss Ellie. My well-honed Inspector's senses are tingling. I feel a most fearsome adversary lurking about. This time you're really up the creek without a paddle, kids. <laughs> 
Say hello to a not so little friend of mine from the Coliseum. He's large, he's in charge, and most of all, he's hungry. <laughs> Where in the world is he? I haven't got all night. Oh, thanks, Godbert. <laughs> My chimera! Who is that half-naked fool? Mm. Father, could it be that the aura of unmitigated murderous rage that I felt was not our quarry, but you? Buildy! I was merely taking a stroll in search of inspiration and materials for my newest masterpiece in the making. And what brings you and your friends to these parts today? Just a bit of sleuth work, father dear. And with that, we must return to Uldar. If you have not heard, your son is set to compete for the Mithril Cup. Oh, moonlighting as a gladiator, are we? A fitting second career for a Manderville man, if I say so myself. That muscle-bound old man is the inspector's father. Remind me never to go to one of their family reunions. Gah, just who is this inspector anyway? Hildy is... A worthy rival, if there ever were one. Oh, who goes there? Hildy, Reen, I have been waiting for this day. It's Greg. Well, look at who we have here. You're quite the intimidating gent yourself. A friend of the inspector, perhaps? I am Gilgamesh, a wandering duelist. And I am not so much as the inspector's friend as his enemy. Well, that makes two of us. Hurry up, Gulliver, because this just might be your lucky day. Is there no one in this cursed realm who can remember my... Ugh. Call me whatever what you will, friend, but heed my words. Green is a formidable foe. Mm. That sounds like high praise coming from a big fellow like yourself. That's such a powerhouse as a sidekick. That inspector must be something else indeed. I know not what brings you to do battle with these two, but I warn you. You'll end up as seafood soup if you face them alone. And with that, I must be off. For reasons I do not entirely understand, I am considered something of a fugitive in these parts. Freen, I will not so fall so easily this time. It looks like I've got my legs full, all eight of them. But that adventure is too strong to take on alone. I'll just have to bring along a friend. <laughs> a supplely twisting ring calling to mind the undulations of a creature of the sea. Yes, inspiration has struck. Huh? <laughs> 
Uh, nobody here but us octopodes. Walter was a long way from the ocean? Yeah. Apparently he was uh, summoned by the Thaumaturges Guild when they were experimenting with ancient magics and uh, they put him to work in the desert. Or they work into, put him to work in the city. Look forward to your next life as a masterpiece fiend! Muscle heads! I hate them! Heavens, chancing upon father like that. I dare say it has taken a year off my life. But a crowd has assembled. It would seem festivities are nigh about to commence. I hope to uncover more of Miss Avila's secrets. But no matter. What better place to continue my investigation than on the field of battle? Are you going to ask her questions in the middle of fighting? Heavens, we haven't much time before the tourney begins. So we must hasten back to the Coliseum and apprise ourselves in the rules of engagement. To be a true gentleman, the battle is not about victory or defeat, but fighting with honor. Whatever treachery or guile my opponents may employ, I must not, I will not, lower myself to their level. There is old trust at the top of the stairs. Bums on the head, chip teeth. I am one shabby looking octopus. Tell ya, they don't pay me enough for this. It's all gonna change soon, isn't it, buddy? Oonga! Ah, Mr. Ultras! Just the octopus we were looking for! I was hoping that you might enlighten us just to- Ye gat! Who gave you those ghastly bruises? Uh, uh, bruises? I, I, I fell down the stairs, that's all! Now get lost! I'm a busy octopus! Funga! Ouch! You have my sympathies, good sir. It is challenging enough to coordinate four limbs, let alone eight. Hmm? If someone there inside your office. The, no! Whatever gave you that idea? I was, am simply uh, a fumigating the place for pests, pests like yourself. Now, don't you have a battle to go fight? Funga! Inspector, I think something's alive in there. Uh, that, that's just me, talking to myself. Uh, yes, fun. Gah, gods, yes. Gods, working as a receptionist is fun. Rather bruised, beset by vermin, and still able to find joy and fulfillment in your work? I say, Mr. Ultros, your passion for your chosen profession is truly an inspiration to us all. Green, if you would come with me for a moment. 
I fear the stupidity in the air may be contagious. Well, has your investigation borne any fruit? I see. The villa seeks to win the attorney to claim a fortune and raise her and her sister out of poverty. Furthermore, she has implied that she has taken the necessary precautions to ensure that a victory is all but certain. While training her, you narrowly evaded a series of dastardly obstacles, and upon your return, that strange octopus appeared considerably worse for wear. The evidence points in one direction. The Alamegan girl and Old Trolls are plotting together to claim the Mithril Cup and its lucrative prize. It is not as preposterous as it sounds. I have done some research on our eight-legged friend. It would appear that Old Trolls has become something of a regular old as taverns and uh, houses of pleasure. I suspect that he is using inside knowledge of the workings of the Colosseum to identify and eliminate potential threats, thereby ensuring victory for Avila and earning herself a healthy commission. There is also the matter of the Tempest Blade that is rumored to be the source of Alamek and Girl's strength. This remains a mystery, which means that I fear your life is still in danger, Green. But the gods inform me one of the gods informed me that several crates of refuse from the Colosseum reception room were hastily discarded in Pearl Lane not bills ago. It is a stab in the dark, but the contents may yet provide some answers. I would ask you to bring them to me. Old as Pearl Lane, you will never find a more despicable scum of hive and villainy. Uh, I misquoted that. Ah oh well. They're doing better though. Well, let me see what you have found. A large wooden box containing all sorts of detritus gathered from the Colosseum. Some of it's still twitching. Now what we have here. Yes, a spectacular assortment of innards and entrails and... What's this? A sack even more foul-smelling than the gore it was lying in. If that can be believed, then look here. Something appears to be written on the side. Synth God Sundries. It would seem this merchant had dealings with a squishy mass of tentacles. Let us pay a visit to the man and have him enlighten us to the exact nature of their partnership. Welcome, welcome. What might a discerning gentleman like yourself be looking for today? Stinking Sack, battle feels the day after the slaughter smell better than the unknown contents of this bag. I'm sorry sir, but I, I said it once, I said it a thousand times. No exchanges, replacements, or refunds. I stand by the quality of my wares and I expect my customers to do the same. Wait. Now, did Old Trust send you? I'll be asking the questions here. What exactly did you sell that ungodly creature? Why, an entire sack full of gold truffles, can you believe it? Oh, with the most impressive price in that uh, distinctive aroma. 
but only for the most discerning of customers, which Mr. Ultras clearly is, just as he placed another order today. Could these troubles all be connected to... Uh, no, I shall stop myself before I start sounding like... Inspector Briarden, it wounds me, wounds me that you would sneak off and conduct your investigation without me, and to steal away green here. This gentleman is not impressed. Did you find anything, Inspector? Uh, good God, what is that dreadful smell? Miss Ellie, I would have expected a cultured young woman like yourself to be more educated in the Epicurean arts. That is the most distinct and delightful aroma of the gold truffle, an acquired taste to be sure, but one that has won the heart of many an old Don Gourmet. Oh, huh. he actually knew something. I particularly enjoy them slow roasted, as my dear mother makes them. Roasted, you say? Why, my mouth's just watering thinking about it. Let it be so bold as to ask for the recipe. It appears a productive portion of this conversation has come to an end. Besides, the turn is about to begin. Let us make haste back to the Coliseum. a la Manderville. Well, that much proved to be a spectacular waste of time. Time which is in short supply. We must return to the Coliseum before the battles begin. Here's a plan, Green. I shall find a suitable vantage point to observe Miss Avila in combat. Until I've ascertained the trickery behind her abilities, you ought to keep a wide berth of her blade, understood? You are. I was just going to sign to Bailey without you. <laughs> I'd be remiss to not tell you that it's been a slight change of plans. Now, look, I said this under the top of the last minute injury, and none other than our very own Ultras have stepped in to take its place. And with everyone's favorite octopus joining you two in the fray, spectators are just pouring in, and bookmakers across town are raking in the gill, which ain't a bad thing for us. Or not as the Master Fear Geist himself is quite taken with my promotional skills. Aye, the future's looking bright for old Dower Meadow, it is. So what do you say? Then you're ready to get your asses kicked. Ah, ah, ah. Ready for battle? Yes. Aye, that's what I like to hear. Ladies and gents, it's time for the blades to whirl and limbs to fly. Hopefully not mine. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, plutocrats and poppers, open your eyes and seal your stomachs. The Mithril Cup, brought to you by our ever-charitable friends at Amachina and Sons Mineral Concern. Your concern is our concern. It is about to begin. Who will stand atop the top to heap of main bodies and twisted limbs to claim victory? Will it be te Tempestuous Avila of Alamigo? Green, the famed warrior life, or... Who's that, Green and Krugan? Ah, that's right! Humberbatch, agent of infamy and imbecile extraordinaire! Or will it be our 11th hour entry, Ultras, the eight-legged purple purveyor of pain? Ouch. <laughs> Here I am! Did you miss me? I'd say we have a battle for the ages here, folks. Combatants, take your positions. 
And let the battles begin! You know the deal. We team up by wipe out the others, then it's just the two of us. I'll take a dive. And you receive your share of the winnings. I have not forgotten our promise. Navila's blades spin. Why, she's the veritable whirlwind of death and destruction out there. They bring a tough in Alamigo, that's for certain. You are next. Here we go, ladies and gents. Once my buddy gets a whiff of these raw truffles, he'll be sneezing up a storm. Literally. Mmm, <laughs> mushrooms. Ah, nothing like a rich aroma of roasted truffles. All this fighting is giving Uncle Ulti an appetite. Is time for dinner yet? Wait, wait a minute. Roasted truffles? Braised in a savory sauce, just like Mother used to make them. Feel free to have seconds. There's a whole sack full where that came from. That meddling muscle head! Was taking him so damn long. The girl's gaze gives it away. Open that gate at once. What is that monstrosity? <gasps> Mr. Typhon! Is that your stomach I hear rumbling? Uh, could I interest you in some roasted truffles, perhaps? What fascinating friend you have, Ulti! Why, just look at this charming little nose, hmm? Is he perhaps suffering from a case of the sniffles? <laughs> Could it be? Avila's vaunted Tempest Blade. It was that monster all along. The girl played us all for fools. Uh, don't look at me. It was all her idea. I I'm just a stupid octopus. You wouldn't want to approach me, you double-dealing fiend. I, I just didn't want to experience the thrill of battle, you know, for my work and all. Come on, Tower. Has Uncle Elt he ever lied to you? What did I tell you? I knew there was something fishy about the Alamegan whore. Alamegans. <laughs> Berger's and brutes a lot of them. Give them a home in our lands and this is the thanks we get. Then it's a golem off for all I care. Just get her out of my sight before I get sick. But, 
But I just wanted to... My sister... I feel for the girl, really. My little octopus goes heart goes out to her. But the rules is rules, right? Now, if Uncle Ulti may be so bold. I say we call up the Millie and have a final showdown between the three remaining competitors. That'll be me, my buddy Typhon, and Greed here. What do you say, Mr. Warrior of Light? Aye, that's what the crowd that's what we want to say. Old trust! Old trust! Old trust! Well now, this is the most unpresented turn of events. What am I to deny the witches are such passionate crowd of martial arts aficionados? The venue? Halatali, the fighters, the tag team of Old Trust and Typhon versus the Warrior of Light. Who will be left standing when the storm has settled? Be there or miss a battle for the ages? So to review, the troubles were to elicit a sneeze from the octopus's oversized crony, which would be positioned as to appear was coming from the Alamican girl's blade, allowing the two to sweep away their opponents with ease. No wonder I wasn't able to see it sooner, quite possibly the most imbecile scheme I've encountered in my years as a consulting inspector. At any rate, we have no choice but to trust in your abilities now, Green. Let us make for Halatali. No either, Inspector. He did not fight as a gentleman. Let's see, all the way in Eastern Thandaland. And away here we go. Well, this turn is turning into a right mess. Well, trouble I took preparing consolation prizes for the melee. Looks like we won't be needing them after all. Of course, as long as you're bringing the spectators and the profits, I could give a nuts ass. <laughs> now, I know what you're thinking. Two against one ain't fair, especially when one of the two is the size of a small house. But here's the deal. Why don't you bring along some of your friends for the battle? Let's say several of them. That should be the odds, eh? Back in sec, now accessible. It's fine, I'll just do it solo. The frenetic free for all as for the meat throw cup moves to Halatali for a climactic confrontation. Rain will lash and winds will bluster in this perfect storm of a battle. When the tempest subsides, who will rise above the chaos to lay claim to the victor spoils? Will it be the warrior of light, savior of the orgy, and a champion of her people, or the dastardly duo of Ultras and Typhon? All will be answered in Halatali atop the dragon's neck. Hey, I need to reset my portrait. Combatants, final competition will be held here atop Dragon's Neck. If all members of the team fall from the platform, they forfeit the match. Will the battle begin? Team Matsuma's not on the menu today, kids. Huh. Impt. Like that. 
Aha! Everything is easy when you're overstated and overgeared. Thwarted again! I feel like such a sucker. And green claims a mithril cup. I didn't even get to see Typhon's uh, super snort attack. Show Green, your performance has earned us a front row seat at the award ceremony. This should afford us the perfect vantage point to what the thief. Come, let us return to the Coliseum. It was a battle for the ages, but a worthy victor has risen to claim the spoils. Now let's take a look at the rel that our champion has won. Behold! When the personal vaults the Master Fear Geist himself, the Warden's Grace, a timeless treasure like the wit the likes of which our realm has never seen. One that turned the attention of Eolzia's most prominent pilferer. <laughs> Above you. Ladies and gentlemen, inspectors and invertebrates. The opening act dragged on over long, but worry not. The main event is about to begin. I know that you paid well for your seats here today, but I can assure you that my performance will not leave you disappointed. Now, I invite one and all to sit back and enjoy the show. Vile fiend! Mark my words, you have stolen your last treasure! I swear it upon the Manderville name! <laughs> I think not, Hildegard! <laughs> Greg! It's always a pleasure to reunite with old friends, but your timing truly leaves something to be desired. Me once, but not today. 
I shall have my revenge when I pierce your chest with my spear. Do you not mean your skewer? My spear! Vile thief, is there not a shred of honor in you? Return my weapon at once. Oh, it seems we have an unexpected guest. I appreciate your enthusiasm, but I fear attendance at today's performance is by invitation only. Hey, a gold truffle. Hmm, now it's raining truffles, but the battle's already... Uh, uh, Mr. Typhon, er, er, just a moment. I sure I had tissue here somewhere. Alas and alack, the ring sails straight into the hands of the fiend. Giving up so soon, are we? Those don't sound the words of a, like the sounds of a, words of a Manderville man. It's Godbert Manderville. Yay. But of course, brilliant father. If the ring come, won't come to me, I shall go to the ring. Why, it'll be just like Dalamud. Hildebrand Helidor Maximilian Manderville? Skyward, as only a Manderville can! Oh, uh, you went past the ring. Father, you do not know your own strength! Ah! Nine hundred and ninety-seven, nine hundred and ninety-eight, nine hundred and ninety. Yeah. 
these legs, they look strangely familiar. Put a little too much spin in that one, it seems. Not exactly as planned, but who can argue with the results? Say for one thing, this ring is fake. But no matter, I have a feeling this will lead me to the true treasure. Until next time, friends. You have been a most attentive audience. Uh, that key! Bloody hells! Guards! Seize a fiend at once! Oh, it's a little grenade. Oh, it's a big grenade. Oh, it's a... Oh. Too late, sir. The second prize, the Ring of Inquiry. It's gone. Second prize? What's the meaning of this? Many face fiends don't know the man spoke true. Master Goldsmith's eye cannot be deceived. This sun sphere is clearly a second rate replica. Preposterous! Yeah, it's just the, the, the dim lighting. Yeah, if it'll step over here. If you take an ill friend, you seem to be perspiring most heavily. Uh, let's not be so hasty, friends. I, I can explain. Sold out my honor, join forces with that odious octopus, all for a false treasure. What a fool I have been. Whatever was I thinking? Do not berate yourself so, Miss Avila. Why, it was exactly as you said, was it not? You were thinking of dear Hegelina and nothing more. I suppose I was at that. Hmm? How do you know my sister's name? I assure you, young miss, under no circumstances did I tell you to the Nanawa mines to eavesdrop on your intimately personal dialogue with your beloved sister. Ugh, you... You... You have the right of it. Blinded by the prospect of fortune and fame, I lost sight of myself and what I truly was fighting for. My honor and my sister's trust will not easily be regained, but I will not shirk from the challenge. One mystery still remains. Before the thief had identified the ring as fake, he had already acquired the key to a storeroom. Clearly the second prize, the Ring of Inquiry, was his target from the start. But why? 
There must be some pattern to the items the fiend has stolen. A pattern that betrays his true intentions. A treaty blade, Azima's virtue, and a ring of inquiry. All relics with a history. No, or to be more precise, relics from the era of the Baladians. Oh, if the answer is so, if that is so, the answer is clear as day. The fiend means to found Eorzea's greatest museum of Belladian history, pushing up the prices and gouging honest men out of their hard-earned coin. Doubtless another one of these cars will appear on the scene to tell us just as much. That's about the time a card should come by. Ah, there's one. Oh, that's a big card. Double ouch. I have enjoyed our little game, but all good things must come to an end. I shall claim the full sacred treasures, and justice shall be served. So this is the thief's final challenge to us. But what are these four treasures of which she speaks? When the four treasures of Baladia become one, the wicked shall be judged in the light of blazing sun. Blazing light of sun. An old legend, little more than a fairy tale at that, but it seems the Phantom Thief believes there is some truth in these words. All sacred relics from Baladia, the Warden's Justice. Lofty words coming from a glorified footpad. The one who's winning over the common folk by the day if the rumors are to be believed. It would seem the tales of a master thief ruffling the feathers of the rich and famous have won the man and more than a few admirers. Consider his targets thus far, an old on corrector, collector and a hired thugs, a trading mogul and the brass blades, and now a mining magnet and the stone torches. Is it any surprise that the sympathies of ordinary old dons would lie with the perpetrator rather than his victims? Astutely observed, Miss Ellie. Our quarry clearly harbors no small degree of resentment for wealth and authority. Might his next target be a member of the Syndicate? Perhaps the Sultana herself? Aha! Then it will be to his downfall, for the greater the challenge, the higher I rise! <clears throat> uh, just one moment, if you would. Mark my words, ye of many faces. There is but one man who shall lay claim to the four lost relics of Palladia, and shall be Hildegard, agent of inquiry, inspector extraordinaire.
Yes, I'm sure that inspires us all with great confidence. Hmm, what's that? No, couldn't be. <laughs> Meeting Godbert made in a new pair of spectacles. It's a race to recover the four lost relics of Baladia. As the fiend's true identity and aspirations are revealed. Will Eorzea fall prey to the forces of evil? Or will our hero do only what Amanderville can? Hildebrand will return in her last vow. Key to the next case is a mask. Ever worn a mask for so long that you forgot what you actually look like? I have. And how did they freeze in midair like that? Talk about a mystery. Oh well. See you next time. And I am also going to have to see everyone next.